Miss May here. And I'm going to walk us through the semester exam practice exam. So the idea here is I want you to have this document, this practice exam, right beside you while you're taking the actual semester exam so that when you're looking at problem number one on the test, I want you to look back at problem one of the review so that you can kind of refresh your memory and go, oh yeah, that's what we did in order to figure out the answer. The other piece that I want you to be careful of is make take sure that you're taking really good notes on this document so that you can send it to me for your extra credit. Um, before we get started, one more thing too. I'm going to be using the Desmos graphing calculator. You definitely can be using a TI-83 or 84 to do most of these problems as well, but it's just a little easier for me to share Desmos here. And I'll put the link to the Desmos graphing calculator in the description so that you can access that pretty easily. So let's get started. We're gonna look at problem number one and right off the bat, we wanna use that Desmos graphing calculator. So let me switch our format here so that you can see it. There we are. And I'm gonna take number one here and I'm gonna put these two equations into my Desmos graphing calculator. So I'm just doing Y equals, and friends, I'm just typing this with my, here's my keyboard. Oops, a negative three X, three X plus two. And there it has most graphs it for me. And then I'm going to press enter. And I'm going to type in that second one. Y equals 13X plus 6. Now, the beauty of Desmos graphing calculators, do you see where those two intersect right there? If you will use your cursor to hover over that point, Desmos will tell you where they intersect. And you and I remember that when we're solving by graphing, we're all about looking for that intersection. So in this problem, I'm gonna write down that solution that Desmos found for me pretty easily. But as far as the work goes, I want to make sure that I am showing a little bit of work. So I'm gonna draw these two lines as a sketch, okay? So that I get credit for doing the work for them. So one of them leans this way, so friends, what I did is I took that point, that negative 0 0.25, 2 0.7, and I made a line that leans that way. And then I've got another line, because I'm looking at my Desmos graph to make sure that I'm drawing it pretty similar, and I've got another graph that leans this way. And voila, it works, okay? So let me switch back over to our other format so you can see the practice exam a little bit better. This problem's asking me for how many solutions does the system of equations have? Really nice. We're going to use that Desmos graphing calculator again. So should have stayed there. <laughs> Here we go. Now, friends, before we get started, let's X out the two equations from the previous problem so that they're not in our way. And let's type in the equations for number two. Again, use your keyboard to type that in and then press enter to type in number two. There we go, and look at what we have. Ooh, they look to be the same. They look to be parallel, that's what we call that. So where are they gonna intersect? Well, they're not. So that means we're gonna have no solution. But you remember, in order to get your extra credit, you've got to show steps, okay? Or you've got to show explanation. Um, and so we want to write just a little bit of explanation. I'm going to use the abbreviation because the lines are parallel. That works real nice for us. Okay, so we'll take a break from the Desmos calculator so that we can do number three. This one asked me, what inequality is represented by the graph below? So you'll notice the shading is the pink area here. If you happen to print yours in black and white, then of course that's just a light gray area. But when we have this vertical line, okay, then I know that that is X only. There's no Y in that line. 
in that inequality. And I noticed that it's a dotted line. Hopefully you can see that dotted red line there. So I know that there's not going to be an equal to underneath it. So I know that X is going to be less than, and it's less than because it's shaded to the left, shaded to the area where X is less than this particular value right here, which is negative one, negative two, negative three. So let's recap. This is a dotted line. That's why there's not an equal to underneath our inequality. And it's X only because it's a vertical line here. So we're saying that all the values were X is less than negative three. Okay, let's look at number four then. Madison has 15 pairs of earrings to sell and is making two pairs a day. Carla has nine pairs and is making three pairs a day. So how many days will they have the same number of pair of earrings? So let's write an equation first of all for Madison. She is making two pairs a day or two pairs per day. When you see that a day or per day, that's an indication you're going to multiply. So I'm going to do two times a day. So maybe I'll put D, right? And Madison already had 15 to, to start with. So there's Madison. Let's do Carla then. Remember that per day tells you to multiply. So three per day. And she already had nine to begin with. And we want to know when these two are equal to each other. So you notice how I put the equal between them, and I just want to solve. So the first thing we do is to get all of the Ds on one side. Um, I don't know about you, but I like my Ds to go to the left. So I'm going to subtract 3D from both sides. That'll give me 2D minus 3D gives me negative D plus 15 equals 9. Now I'm going to move the 15 by doing the opposite of adding 15. That's to subtract 15. And that gives me negative D equals negative 6. Well, if negative D equals negative 6, then positive D must be 6 days. So just a reminder, remember that make sure you're showing all of those steps so that you get your extra credit for the practice exam. Okay? All right, moving along, we're doing great here. Problem number five, we want to write a system of equations for both of these. Let me zoom in just a little bit. So hopefully you can see the counting of those. Let's do the blue line first. K has a y-intercept of two. And I want you to remember that y equals mx plus b formula, where m's the slope and b is the y-intercept. So for the blue line, I have y equals, I've got an x plus 2. And the 2 comes from where it touches the y-axis. Then I want you to see that we go down 1, right 1. Did you see the slope there? Down 1, right 1. So that's down 1 means negative 1 for my rise. And right 1 would be a positive 1 there. So this blue line is y equals negative x plus 2. Now let's write the equation for the red line. Again, it has a y-intercept of 2. And let's check its slope. So from here, it goes up to 1, 2, and right 1. So it's up to right 1 for its slope. And so if we simplify that, we get y equals 2x plus 2 for our two equations that are graphed here. Remember to use that y equals mx plus b formula to help you write those equations. All right, friends, one more on this um, page, and that is going to be we're finding the solution again. So I'm going to switch back over to our Desmos. Let's x out the equations we had before, and we'll put in the two equations we see here for number 6. So we have y equals 12x minus 4. And we have y equals oh, negative 14x plus 2. Remember, use your calculator, I'm sorry, your cursor. Go and highlight those two, that intersection there. 
and that is your solution. So let's write it. I've got um, 0 0.231 and negative 1.231. Now, of course, we can't just leave it without with that work there, without work. So I'm just going to draw myself a little sketch of what Desmos looks like. Okay. Desmos looks like I have one line that's going here. And then I have one line that's going this way. And this is my solution there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'll put the link to the next video for the next problems on the next page of the learn of the practice exam. Uh, but feel free to go ahead and um, let me know in the comments if you have questions or anything that I can help with.